HSBC exists to open up a world of opportunity for its customers. It uses its global and local expertise to bring people, ideas and capital together. HSBC has more than 40 million customers across 64 countries and territories, and it's served by over 200,000 employees across our global locations. HSBC holds $1,643 billion in customer deposits, and in 2020, it extended $80 billion in support to help those customers cope with COVID-19. As HSBC transforms to meet their customers' changing needs, we're putting the power of our bank in every customer's pocket with easier and more secure digital banking, supported by the expertise of our people, which is where engineering joins the party. For an engineer, this environment poses many challenges, from our customers' expectations of immediacy in their transactions to processing billions of data points, all managed at a global scale. With functional variance between countries and each country having its own financial regulator, which is very relevant when dealing with data in the cloud. So messaging is how our customers can digitally engage with HSBC in a more personal and timely way. Managing their finances using their channel of choice from mobile notifications to uh, web live chat. HSBC is driven by a focus on those customers and is responding to trends such as global smartphone adoption. 40% of people in the world now have one. And a predicted 70% of all customer interactions will use tools like chatbots, machine learning and messaging. So applying those trends to the HSBC experience means we need to augment that experience and create a two-way conversation with the customer that informs them, it listens to them, it reminds them, it helps them, and it secures them. The engineering response to this is a new kind of operating system for our customers. Instead of HSBC reacting to a question, we need to be proactive in providing timely information. Instead of a customer navigating with a mobile application, they can use nat natural language texting to get what they need. Engineering has an internal customer too. These are our business operations teams across messaging and contact centers. They also need the capabilities to manage their end of this two-way conversation. So our customers can be confident that they're being engaged by experts who are aware of the context of their needs. Let's examine a straightforward use case to illustrate the concept. To inform the customer about money leaving their account, the usefulness of which can range from informative to regulatory, that transaction data needs to be captured from a source of truth. Interpreted, is it a credit or a debit? Have rules applied to it? Is the customer interested? Have they configured thresholds? How do they want to receive such messages? Then the information needs to be converted into a customer-friendly message and then finally delivered to the customer. Whilst the overall data and messaging platforms span all of that data flow, the message orchestration platform is specifically responsible for the bits in between the data and delivering the message. So the interpretation, applying the rules, creating the message all at scale. And in the case of mobile push notifications, it also delivers that message as well. HSBC wanted to radically overhaul its approach to software development. And this messaging initiative was one of the few pathfinders that were the start of a revolution that today sees HSBC operate with a cloud-first strategy mature cloud development teams, not least my own team, many of whom have been on this journey with us for over three years now, and not forgetting cloud governance befitting a highly regulated industry such as financial services. We prioritize data privacy and security in our platforms, as well as ensuring we observe customer preferences. AWS was chosen because it's great in rich web application services, which is an area of cloud development that the messaging orchestration team has really seized upon. We want to focus on building capabilities that enable great product development and not spend unnecessary time building infrastructure and integrations. We also want to minimize the impact of right-sizing applications by using flexible and quickly changing configuration as code on a dynamic hosting platform, which all means that as we learn new things about our platform and how our customers interact with it, we can quickly react to scale it and even refactor major components in a fraction of the time HSBC was used to. We needed a platform that would be capable of receiving and processing approximately 100 million events per day. These are both real-time events such as uh, customer account updates, transactions across their banking accounts and credit accounts, as well as near real-time events such as you know, when the statement is ready or payment due reminders. And these are generated from overnight batch systems.
The traffic of incoming events will be fairly inconsistent, mirroring our customer behavior. For ex example, we expect more transactions around breakfast and lunch times than late evenings. Also at the end of the month, consistent with payday, the bank and transactions increase. We also expect a surge in traffic when batch systems execute on our mainframes overnight producing statements. Therefore, we also need the platform to scale adequately throughout the day to handle sudden increase in volume. AWS serverless technology seemed a very good fit as it allowed us to scale to the volumes required without having to worry about management of the underlying infrastructures. It also afforded us significant cost savings compared to building the service using IaaS based environment due to not paying for idle time and paying only by the millisecond for the services we consumed. It allowed the development teams involved to focus on innovating and developing the product rather than having to manage infrastructure. Let's have a look at the architecture in more detail. As you can see, the orchestration platform is capable of receiving data from multiple sources. Customer account updates and transactions are sourced real time from an on-premise data pipeline consisting of Apache Kafka clusters and Apache NiFi. The same pipeline also sends us near real time data such as statement ready events. Added to that, we have decisioning systems also sending us data such as payment due reminders. The platform consists of five distinct serverless microservices, each within their own VPCs with responsibilities for event processing, preference management, message content curation, message fulfillment, and platform support. The first service in the platform is the event map service. This consists of an Amazon API gateway providing the integration with source systems for real time and batch events. Real-time data is subsequently processed via Amazon Kinesis Streams and AWS Lambdas providing the desired low latency and throughput. With batch data, we take a slightly different path of Amazon S3, Amazon SQS, and AWS Lambda. This has been done deliberately so that we only incur the greater cost of Kinesis for real-time use cases only. All incoming data is transformed, enriched, and persisted in Amazon DynamoDB. To maximize throughput and reduce Kinesis shard cost, inbuilt Kinesis batching is utilized. We have also built a bespoke multi-threaded event processing framework to split the batch workload and process asynchronously. And with a careful configuration of shards, batch size, and our own multi-threaded framework, we are easily able to process 3,500 events per second. Added to that, we have implemented a custom dead letter queue framework using Amazon SNS and Amazon SQS to move erroneous payloads for offline processing and debugging. This enables our Kinesis streams to remain free. The next service is our preference service. This is built using API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB and is used to onboard our mobile customers and manage their preferences. All data received by the event map service is checked against the preference service to ensure that the data belongs to a customer who has onboarded for messaging and has opted in to receive a message corresponding to the incoming data. Then we have the message service. This is composed of an API gateway with Lambda integration and uses S3 to fetch message templates. It uses the templates and creates messages using data from the message payloads and stores them in an outbound DynamoDB table for subsequent consumption by the mobile app. Then we have the notification service. This again is architected using the same serverless pattern of API Gateway, Kinesis, and Lambda, and is used to send push messages via services such as Airship and SNS. The final service is the platform service. This underpins the whole platform and provides services such as authorization, logging, monitoring, as well as the DLQ framework mentioned earlier. So make no mistake, HSBC Engineering have faced multiple challenges on this journey that are relevant to anyone else attempting the same feat. So my top three are upskilling. Maybe it was harder to find AWS skills three years ago, but none of our team are AWS experts. We've built that knowledge through hard work and partnering with experts. This was a passive challenge with a long tail of impact, but one that can be short-circuited with active mitigation, such as leveraging the AWS certification tracks to structure that learning. Next is cloud governance. Financial services are highly regulated, and this was a top of bank level effort working with AWS to meet HSBCs and our many regulators' needs for cloud controls and governance. This is the area that has matured the most in HSBC with dedicated effort and tooling to help our teams self-service on AWS as much as possible. Lastly, the adoption lifecycle. 
This is the classic cycle of growing AWS, realize the costs are spiraling and then optimize. Fortunately, we were able to optimize quickly to limit unnecessary spend. But one of the benefits of AWS is transparency of costs, but you must pay attention to it. Following on from what Chris just said, being early adopters of AWS Cloud and architecting our platform around native services, we found that we did not have a full understanding initially of the running cost of the platform once it would be in production and start servicing the millions uh, of daily events it was being designed for. Running production-like simulations and looking at the AWS billing dashboard showed us that we needed to redesign some of the architecture. The architecture that we had at the start was a lot more granular and consisted of more services. Um, we also did a lot of the data processing initially using EMR clusters. By removing these clusters in favor of lambdas and by rationalizing the architecture into fewer microservices, this allowed us to reduce the cost substantially and make the platform a lot more viable. The AWS billing dashboard was key in this exercise as we were able to iteratively make changes to the architecture and run production-like simulations and get immediate feedback as to the implications on cost. One other challenge we experienced was around how quickly you could react to sudden peaks in traffic. For example, when overnight batteries would run on source systems and we experienced sudden peaks in load, we found that in some cases, we needed to scale more quickly than the native DynamoDB mechanisms could provide. We worked closely with AWS and augmented the auto-scaling mechanism. We devised a solution where we use CloudRouch to monitor incoming traffic and quickly scale the DynamoDB read-write capacity when the thresholds were exceeded. This enabled us to comfortably cater for the peaks. So far, this part of the wider platform is live to 2 million HSBC customers in the UK. And that is increasing to all UK customers as we're recording this. The platform has processed close to 10 billion events and delivered over 300 million messages. To say that AWS has been rock solid would be an understatement. Out of those 10 billion events, we've had very minimal platform errors. It doesn't even break a sweat with peak loads at the end of the month, which is when people typically get paid, which generates twice as many events and auto scales our AWS Lambda estate. Speed to market was always one of our goals. So we've built the platform to be multi-tenant using three AWS regions, which allows us to onboard new markets in two weeks. And we're proud not to be the bottleneck in the delivery cycle. HSBC is near the beginning of this journey, but has built up momentum that will see this platform live in our remaining two regions this quarter and onboard many new markets this year. The platform deployment and development is a breadth and depth approach the breadth is to enable as many customers as quickly as we can around the world with the current feature set. The depth is to expand the number and sophistication of features, which you'll have to keep an eye out for throughout this year and beyond.